Closed captioning provided by Garlic, cholesterol's natural enemy. The number of U.S. troop deaths in Iraq reaches a grim milestone. California gubernatorial hopefuls Arnold Schwarzenegger and Cruz Bustamante shift their campaigns into high gear. And the Ten Commandments time in Alabama's judicial building is coming down to the wire. Good afternoon, 5 o'clock in the East Coast, 2 p.m. out west. Hello, everybody. Thanks for getting updated with CNN Headline News. I'm Chuck Roberts. Hi, I'm Linda Stouffer. We move right into our top story. A search is underway off the Massachusetts coast for a two-man crew feared killed. Their plane crashed into Nantucket Town this afternoon. The FAA reports a Colgan Air flight bound for Albany, New York, crashed into Nantucket Sound an hour and a half ago, shortly after takeoff from Hyannis Airport. That's a live picture there. You can see the debris in the water. Authorities say the plane was a Beach 1900 twin turboprop. It tried to return to Hyannis after declaring some kind of emergency. It crashed, though, just about three miles south of the airport. An airline spokeswoman says the plane's two crew members were the only people on board. And uh, those are uh, live pictures we've been looking at from our affiliate. It's uh, WBZ in Boston. Addressing a group of veterans today in St. Louis, President Bush vowed the United States will not stop its war on terrorism in spite of the rising cost. Suzanne Malveaux is traveling with the president and joins us live from the Gateway City with the latest. Suzanne Hyde. Well, hi, Chuck. It really is all a part of a concerted effort by the Bush administration to try to maintain support for his war on terror. Of course, he talked about the highlights, the progress. Uh, Two-thirds of senior al-Qaeda captured or killed, uh, the destruction of Saddam Hussein's regime, as well as a better life for the Afghan people. This speech was really meant uh, for three audiences, the American audience, international audience, and the Iraqi people. He stressed to Americans that uh, what he called a new strategy in taking the war on terror to those abroad. He said that it was better to do that than to wait for them to attack at home. We also remember what this fight is about. Our military is confronting terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places, so our people will not have to confront terrorist violence in New York or St. Louis or Los Angeles. The president also made an appeal to the international community. He said that this is a struggle between civilization and chaos, that no nation should remain neutral. And then to the Iraqi people, he said that uh, they did not have to fear that Saddam Hussein would ever return, uh, that he also called as well for them to take a much more active stance in the reconstruction of that country. But as you know, Chuck, the administration really trying to maintain the support. They know that it is very difficult. And 139 Americans uh, now killed. That is uh, a number that surpasses the number that was killed during when major combat was going on inside of that country. Jack? And the president earlier today was in uh, Minnesota. He has made a lot of stops in both Minnesota and Missouri, and it's not an accident. It's not a coincidence, is it? Well, no coincidence at all, actually. They're both the battleground states for 2004 and the uh, re-election bid. He uh, actually uh, lost uh, just a little bit to Gore in Minnesota, and he won in Missouri, but by a very small margin. So both of these states considered critical to building up that uh, electoral college vote mass that he needs to win 2004. All right. Suzanne Malveaux with the president in St. Louis. Suzanne, thanks. Suzanne just mentioned this. Uh, the Iraq's occupation is cost in American lives, uh, and it's reaching a sobering milestone today, as mentioned, because 140 U.S. personnel have died since President Bush declared an end to major combat operations. That was May 1st. 138 service members died during the first phase of the war. One of the latest fatalities was a soldier that was killed during an attack on a military convoy. The State Department's attempt to win U.N. backing for a larger force it appears to be coming up empty. U.N. Ambassador John Negroponte says, quote, we're nowhere near a resolution on Iraq. A CNN military analyst had this to say about the idea of sending more troops into Iraq. The congressmen are wrong. Uh, I believe that we need more troops over there when General John Abizade, who is a stand-up guy, says we need more. I, I am firmly on the side of not rushing a bunch of troops over there that you have to support uh, that you have to protect and to provide more targets. The key is for us to get out of Iraq and turn it over to the Iraqis, not rush more U.S. troops in there. On the other hand, if General Abizaid says he needs more to conduct specific missions and they are the right types of troops, uh, then I'll believe it. But right now, I don't think the answer is to rush a bunch of more people over there.
The Pentagon says the latest military raids north of Baghdad have netted two dozen suspected Iraqi criminals. The final report on the shuttle Columbia disaster says NASA didn't have effective checks and balances. The 13-member investigation board's report today placed a lot of blame on the organization culture and safety program at NASA. They say if sweeping changes aren't made, the scene will be set for another disaster. Officials have known for months a piece of insulation foam struck the edge of the shuttle's left wing after liftoff, and that led to its disintegration on reentry. The chairman of the investigation is worried mission managers will pay a lot of attention to the next dozen and flights and then return to old habits. The board, however, is concerned that over a period of a year or two, the natural tendency of all bureaucracies, not just NASA, to morph and migrate away from that diligent attitude is of great concern to the board because the history of NASA indicates that they've done it before. Columbia 7 crew members were killed when the shuttle re-entered the atmosphere February 1st. The spacecraft broke apart and scattered debris over Texas and Louisiana, among other states. Time is running out for the Ten Commandments in Alabama's Judicial Building. State Attorney General Bill Pryor hasn't given an exact date when the monument would be removed, but he says it could be this week. Well, I'm not going to announce exactly when and how we're going to do it, but uh, we're we have a plan in place. It's going to be done very soon. Uh, the federal court has agreed to postpone its hearing on the matter until this Friday, and uh, there's no doubt well before uh, that Friday status conference, uh, the monument will have been moved. Pryor also says he personally believes the commandments were displayed appropriately, but he adds he's obliged to carry out court orders even if he disagrees with them. The company that installed the monument two years ago, by the way, has now refused to remove it. Alabama's suspended chief justice wanted the Ten Commandments there and has promised to keep fighting to keep them right where they are. To the Middle East now, Israel targeted Hamas militants with missile strikes earlier today in Gaza City. The car the militants were driving in was struck, but they apparently got out in time and escaped, and instead the missiles killed an elderly man and wounded 23 other people. An earlier strike like this one is a reason Palestinian militant groups called off their ceasefire agreement. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg wanted to show his city's solidarity with Israel by visiting Jerusalem today. In fact, he rode a bus along the very route, the one that was blown up in a suicide bombing last week. Bloomberg also visited survivors of that bombing attack. UN inspectors have found traces of highly enriched uranium at a nuclear plant in Iran, and that could mean the country is trying to develop nuclear weapons. But a spokesman for the UN Nuclear Agency says it's not been confirmed. A report by the inspectors shows the facility in southern Iran contains a higher percentage of enriched uranium than is needed for a civilian power program. Iranian officials have told the agency those traces came from equipment imported from another country. Inspectors, though, are just trying to verify that claim. Well, the mood brightened toward the end of trading on Wall Street today. Jennifer Westhoven live at the NYSE to explain. Jennifer? Hi, thanks, Chuck. Light trading means you can influence the market a little more easily on a day like today. By the end of the session, the Dow closed up, not by too much, by 22 points to 93.40. The stock market did, though, manage to get out of the red late in the session. The Nasdaq closes up six points and the S&P 500 up by about three points for the session. All right, we knew it was going to be big, but not this big. It is the latest tally of the federal government's budget deficit. $480 billion next year. This year, about $401 billion. This is according to the Congressional Budget Office. It estimates that in about 10 years, the shortfall could add up to $1.4 trillion. Then the country could get back into the black, meaning back into surpluses, but only if some of President Bush's tax cuts are allowed to die quietly in Congress. By the way, it is those larger deficits that have contributed to higher interest rates. All right, this Thursday, you can take back that hotel towel you borrowed, and they won't ask any questions. Holiday Inn is launching Towel Amnesty Day. Their slogan is, about the towels, we forgive you. Really? <laughs> Admit it, you've got some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if you've been feeling guilty all these years, yeah. Now's your chance. I wait till I go to a very expensive... No, I don't do that. I really don't. <laughs> How about you? Do you? You got any at home? 
I don't, but I grew up with one that I loved. I mean, we had it for years. Yeah, oversized <laughs> beach towels. You can't, you can't buy them anymore. All right, All right, thanks, Jennifer. Thanks a lot, Jennifer. It was supposed to scare them enough to knock them off the path to prison. Speaking of miscreants, did it work? Yeah, thanks a lot, Jack. Well, you can find out in a follow-up to the groundbreaking documentary, Scared Straight. We'll have the DV details later this half hour. Because if you move your hand one more time, you ain't gonna have to worry about it because I'm gonna kick that right off the business face. I have no idea what. Business Today is brought to you by Anderson Windows. Long live the home. Home. There's no place like it. For 100 years, people have been coming home to Anderson Windows. Hello, my darling sweetheart face. Long live the home. Anderson Windows. Newsflash. Your big bloated TV went out of fashion with, well, big bloated TVs. Thin is in. Now the makers of America's best-selling plasma TV introduced two new thin LCD TVs. And since it's our 18th birthday, you can save $200 on our 18-inch model. Their eye-popping color and lightweight design make them the perfect TVs for your bedroom, kitchen, or wherever. So call, click, and come in today to get $200 off a cool new LCD TV from Gateway. Gina? I have another. Get unbelievably low airfares every day. Fly, sleep, drive, cheap. CNN Tonight, our series of special reports on education. We're spending hundreds of billions of dollars each year on education, but students aren't making the grade. Our special report, CNN Tonight, 6 Eastern. The husband of Commander Laurel Clark, CNN Tonight, the only family member of the Columbia crew to break his silence. Hear his reaction to today's NASA report and what he plans to do about it. He joins Paula live from the headlines, 8 Eastern. Folks living in eastern Pennsylvania and western New Jersey were shaken up this afternoon by what some thought was an explosion, but the U.S. Geological Survey confirmed it was really a 3.8 magnitude earthquake. There are no reports of injuries or major damage. The quake was centered about 40 miles north of Philadelphia. Forecasters are warning of extreme rainfall as Tropical Storm Ignacio hovers over Mexico's Baja Peninsula. It passed through La Paz at hurricane strength yesterday. High winds knocked down trees and power lines. Uh, floodwaters reached knee deep in some places, and forecasters say Ignacio could cause dangerous flash floods and mudslides today. The storm is just inching along at two miles an hour, so it could dump 20 inches of rain in some areas. Latest on the recall race in California, the AFL-CIO affiliate in California is embracing a strategy adopted by other labor unions there, today voting to endorse Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante as a fallback candidate, but it wants its members to first vote no on the recall itself. The latest L.A. Times poll may not bode well for Republican candidate Arnold Schwarzenegger. It shows him trailing Bustamante by 13 points six weeks before the election. What's more, fellow Republican Tom McClintock, a state senator, actually gained ground. He finished third in the survey and says that should be a message to Schwarzenegger. It's a tactical decision on behalf of organized labor here in California. We think we need to increase the vote. On, on October the 7th, and we think by encouraging our members to vote on both parts of the ballot, it would increase the ballots, and particularly among our Latino membership here in California, which is quite significant. Obviously, that's an AFL-CIO representative and not State Senator uh, McClintock. Our apologies. Schwarzenegger appeared on a conservative talk show this morning and focused his attack on the lieutenant governor. He says Bustamante is, quote, Gray Davis with a receding hairline and a mustache. 
The woman who accuses L.A. Lakers guard Kobe Bryant of sexually assaulting her has not returned to her college. A spokeswoman says the 19-year-old has not registered for classes at the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley. The unnamed accuser was to have started her sophomore year yesterday. But the spokeswoman says the teenager notified the university several weeks ago she was not planning to return this semester. It's not known whether the woman is just taking a break from school or not returning at all. We'll have the day's top stories for you in just a couple of moments. Also ahead, investigators trying to figure out why a defrocked priest who asked to be in protective custody ended up close to a neo-Nazi who hated homosexuals. Details on the way. Asia's best kept secret. So much more than you ever expected. Taiwan will touch your heart. Okay, you're all hooked up. When you get just a basic high-speed connection in your house, something happens. It's always open. Really open. Open to all sorts of things you just don't want getting in. But add AOL for broadband, which works with and enhances any high-speed connection, and help protect your home from viruses, hackers, spammers, and anything else you don't want getting in. Call now to add AOL to your high-speed connection. Behind him is a 400-square-foot deluxe bachelor with a partial view. In front of him is a junior executive semi-private with no view. But right now, life is perfect. On the open road, in complete control of an Acura RSX. One of car and driver's 10 best. These defense tactics may look like police training, but they're actually part of an intensive pilot class. Officials say needs a serious boost. We're proud to have you on board. Welcome back to CNN Headline News. I'm Chuck Roberts. And I'm Linda Stouffer. We'll have more on that story just mentioned in a moment, but first we check the headlines for you. The deaths of two more service members in Iraq have brought the U.S. military to a gruesome milestone. 140 troops have died since the end of major combat. That surpasses the number who died in the first phase of the conflict, 138. In their final report on the shuttle Columbia disaster, investigators say a long history of relaxed safety procedures at NASA played a key role in the tragedy. The report lists budget concerns and safety compromises as key factors. And a search is underway in Nantucket Sound for a two-member crew feared killed when their plane crashed into the waters off the coast of Massachusetts this afternoon. The commuter plane operated by Colgan Air declared an emergency shortly after takeoff from Hyannis Airport. It crashed three miles from there. The Transportation Security Administration is responding to calls for more armed pilots on commercial flights. A grassroots organization, though, of airline pilots has criticized the TSA's program for pilots, calling it a bureaucratic nightmare. The group says fewer than 200 pilots have been certified to have weapons through the program. It all began in April. The TSA Deputy Administrator for Law Enforcement, though, says the agency is not dragging its feet. TSA has been moving very fast. Those pilots who would criticize us are off base. The program is going full speed ahead with hundreds of pilots already trained or scheduled for class. Let me repeat, TSA is training as many pilots as possible and will continue to graduate new Federal Flight Deck officers from the program every weekend. The agency says the upcoming relocation of the training center now in Georgia will allow more pilots to participate. New details are emerging about the prisoner who's accused of killing defrocked priest John Gagan. The Worcester, Massachusetts district attorney says Joseph Drews has a long-standing phobia of homosexuals of any kind. The DA also says Drews planned the attack for a month. According to a source close to the investigation, a former inmate may have offered Drews money to kill Gagan. The 68-year-old was strangled to death in his cell on Saturday. Drews told officials he jammed the door to Gagan's cell using a book, a nail clipper, and a toothbrush. 
A medical examiner says the death of an autistic eight-year-old Milwaukee boy was a homicide. Terrence Cottrell died during a church service Friday night. The coroner's office in Milwaukee said he suffocated because his chest was restricted. The boy was wrapped in sheets during the service. The church's leader said members were praying for an evil spirit to be removed from his body. Prosecutors are reviewing the case to decide on charges. One man has been arrested. A church official said he led the service in which the boy died. The parents of twin brothers who were found caged in their Phoenix home are now behind bars themselves. Police say the five-year-olds were kept in filthy cribs. They were sealed with wire and plastic crates for up to 20 hours a day. Their mother says she kept the children there while she was at work because their 69-year-old father wasn't able to keep up with them. Both parents are charged with two counts of child abuse and kidnapping. A spokeswoman for the state's Child Protective Services says the agency got a call two years ago complaining that the boys were neglected. She says workers visited the home twice. They found the children playing outside, and apparently they looked healthy. Four out of five U.S. colleges and universities factor SAT scores into their admissions. And this year's freshman class comes in with improved numbers. The College Board, which prepares the test, said this year's math scores were the best in 36 years, and verbal scores hit a 16-year high. The average math score was up three points to 519, and the verbal average climbed three points to 507. College Board officials say the higher scores are significant because a record number of students took the tests, and they were a more diverse group than in the past. Shopping, it brings joy to a lot of people, but a new study says many folks don't get happier as they make more money. A University of Southern California researcher says people usually come closest to nirvana by spending time with their families or having good health. He adds money doesn't necessarily lead to happiness because people who have a lot of cash usually want more things. The study is in the online edition of Proceedings for the National Academy of Sciences. In London, a half million people turned out for one of the biggest street festivals in Europe. Flamboyant floats and masquerade troops lit up the five-mile procession of the Notting Hill Carnival yesterday. The event is modeled after street carnivals in the Caribbean nation of Trinidad. It has prospered in the West London neighborhood for more than 40 years. The event wasn't without its problems, though. There were a number of arrests. Most were drug-related. Crazy costumes. All right, heart attacks, heart throbs, heart pounding action. We'll take you on a trip to the ER in this week's DVD Tales. We'll have that and more for you. Stat. Every day you challenge the status quo, looking further, breaking new ground. You demand more. And Deutsche Bank, as a leading financial institution, shares your passion, aiming higher, pushing harder. That's why the world's most demanding clients trust Deutsche Bank to perform. Deutsche Bank, a passion to perform. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use 1010-987, okay? I'm going to call my mother, and she doesn't know I'm calling. All you have to do is dial 1010-987-1, the area code, and then the number. This is good. She doesn't know. Hello? Hi, Mom. Hi. We're doing a 1010-987 commercial right now, and you're in the commercial. No. Yes. Cool. Now, you know, it's just 3 cents a minute and then 39 cents to connect, right? Right. And where does the bill go, do you know? My regular phone bill? That's right. My mom's the smartest woman in the world. 1010-987. It's that easy. While we were out seeing how people use Dell PCs, we figured a few things out. Number one, Darren can't navigate. Two, you should always watch where you park. And three, when it comes to stuff like digital photography, Dell should bundle the things people use to get the most out of their PC. Back at Dell, our idea was huge. They made up all sorts of bundles that you can check out on our website. They even included some sweet advice on digital photography. And while Darren is still navigationally challenged, Thanks to Dell, when it comes to getting the right PC and PC gear, at least you won't have to worry about getting lost. Add a bundle to any new Dell system and get up to a $75 rebate. To learn more, visit us at dell.com slash roadtrip. And right now, a Dimension desktop with an Intel Pentium 4 processor is just $4.99 after an additional mail-in rebate. Plus, for a limited time, get free shipping. Check out our notebooks, too. Your perfect PC and more. Easy as Dell. Dell PCs use Intel Pentium 4 processors.
The California Supreme Court is chiming in on a burning legal battle concerning DVDs involving one of several websites that have posted software codes which let users copy DVDs. The court says websites can be prevented from posting those codes without a violation of their free speech rights, but it left the question of whether the codes qualify as a trade secret to a lower court. The alien hero from a Disney surfing adventure rides a wave right to your TV, and a documentary from the late 1970s picks up right where it left off. Jason Evans gives us a peek at the latest releases in this edition of DV Details. Boys and girls next door, remember why they're here. We begin this week with a look back at a groundbreaking documentary. In 1978, Scared Straight followed a group of juvenile delinquents behind the walls of New Jersey's Rahway State Prison where they heard some valuable life lessons from the cons inside. When you wake up in the morning, do you think about maybe I have to kill somebody today? No. When I wake up in the morning, I think about maybe I have to kill somebody today. Do you wake up in the morning and think about maybe I'll be killed today? No. Or that maybe a guy like me will break your face for you, huh? No. When I wake up in the morning, I think about that. Is that paranoia? Yeah. For you, it's paranoia. For me, it's a reality. This is prison. This is the movie's first release on DVD, and the new edition also includes a follow-up to the original. It's titled Scared Straight, 20 Years Later. The DVD includes a look at what happened to the juveniles involved, who are now adults in their 30s, and it also follows up with the convicts who appeared in the original movie. Get any closer and I'll do it. Next up, a look back at the first season of what has become a television classic. And remember what made ER one of the most popular and enduring programs on TV. What I want you to do, man. Okay, all right. I want you to tell me if it hurts you when you breathe. No. I don't get a BP. Start two large bore IVs, sailing wide open. Type and cross for 10 units. Give me four units of O negative down there. Stat, drop an NG tube, and get Dr. Benton in here. There's no place for a pediatrician. This Fortis set contains more than 25 hours of episodes and extensive bonus features, including interviews with the show's creators, Michael Crichton and Steven Spielberg. Also included, interviews with the show's original cast members and behind-the-scenes looks at everything from how the actors were chosen to how the sets were created. You'll also get a look at additional scenes and outtakes and an intern's handbook. That'll teach you the procedures and terminology used in the ER. Experiment 221 activated. And finally this week, there's something for the kids. Stitch the Movie is the straight-to-DVD follow-up to Disney's hit animated film Lilo and Stitch. Things get hectic when Hawaii finds itself overrun with the 625 experiments that were made before Stitch was created. Evil genius scientist. And evil genius creation. The disc includes a look at the actors behind the voices of Stitch, Lilo, and the rest of the gang. It also features a trivia pop quiz for the kids and a music video by the pop sensation Jump 5. With DV Details, I'm Jason Evans. Something for everybody there. Yeah. The government says it's uh, meeting the demand of pilots who want to carry a weapon. But pilots say the program isn't moving fast enough. We'll explore that shortly. I'm Chuck Roberts. And I'm Linda Stover. Just ahead, a live report on the weapons training meant to put more guns in the cockpit. You're watching CNN Headline News. Hey,